All right, guys, so a lot of crazy things have happened in Call of Duty over the course of the last 72 hours or so. And I'm here to talk a little bit about it and give you guys my opinion on the situation. Now, I struggled to figure out where to start with this video, so we'll start current and then we'll take a blast through the past. So Clayster got dropped from the Dallas Empire after a world champ. Clayster is a three-time world champion. Clayster won a world championship in Advanced Warfare, he won a world championship in Black Ops 4, and then for the back-to-back -back in Modern Warfare. Now. I think Clayster has the most fortunate but unfortunate career of any Call of Duty pro, and here's why. So let's take a blast all the way back in the day to Black Ops 2. Clayster joins Complexity, and this is one of the dynasty teams, one of the best teams of all time in Call of Duty Esports. They go on to win multiple championships, but somewhere along the lines, they decided that they needed to drop Clay. Now, a lot of people think that the reason that Clay was dropped was because of personality issues. Aix has come out and said that as well. However, there's an argument that they still had personality issues going into their next roster with Karma. Now, after Clayster gets dropped, he's really frustrated because he was performing at every single tournament. He was a player who showed up and played hard and won championship. They pick up Karma and they end up winning the world championship in the next year and Clayster has to feel pretty bad about this because he was on that team and he could have still won with that roster in Ghost. Now Clayster is on Optic Gaming. Towards the end of the season they decide to drop Clayster and put him in a bad situation and then my team picks up Clayster and we dropped him once again. So that is three times Times in one year that Clayster was dropped due to situations that he had no control of. He was performing, he was a good teammate to his knowledge, and people for some reason just didn't want him on the team. Now Clayster ends up joining Denial. This is a squad with Jcap and a couple other scrap players who weren't really popping at the time in the pro scene. They end up winning the world championship, defying all odds in a team of scrap players that were released from their initial roster. Now, at the end of the season, Clayster finds tremendous success with phase and finally finds a home where he feels safe and comfortable. Now that safe and comfortable feeling made Clayster stay on this team for the course of a few years where they had a drought of not winning a championship. Now towards the end of this stint with the phase clan, a lot of players were calling for Clayster's retirement. They said that he didn't have it anymore and that he couldn't win championship. Now, after that phase team broke up, he ends up joining United with Pristinis, Arsides, and Silly. They proceed to not win a championship for their entirety as a team, and he ends up staying with the organization since they believed in him and he felt comfortable around this org. Now, this organization allowed him to pick up new players in JCAP and in Ibiza. Now, having this roster get a top two finish felt like they were on the up and up. However, they still thought that they needed to make a change. Clayster is not able to get a championship with this roster. Roster, and once again, people are calling for him to retire or that he should be dropped from his roster. But he, alongside United, made the decision to stick with each other despite what some of the players and even the fans thought. They end up winning that world championship and defying all odds, once again, Clayster wins a championship and proves that he can still compete at a high level. Now, going into the new year after that, the Tiny Terror duo did not want to play with Clayster once again. They end up leaving him in the dust and he needs to find a new team. So Clayster ends up joining the Dallas Empire with newcomers like Illy and Shotzi into the scene and also Hook who's had a troubling career prior to that. He does have Crim6 to lay his back on who is a fantastic player who he has won championships with so there is a lot of hope there. Now early on this team proved that they were a fantastic squad but the beginning of the season they were losing some of their tough matchup. They end up winning championships but we all know that that doesn't really matter when it comes down to COD champ. They end up winning the world championship. So once again, Clayster has defied the odds of everything and everyone that has been put before him. So thinking about all of this and seeing the decision to drop Clayster, it is still mind blowing, yet I understand why they did it. Call of Duty announced that is switching to 4v4. And when you look at that roster, if there was one player you have to release, it's probably Clayster. Now, this is so troubling and such a hard decision to make. I can't believe that they were able to do it so fast. I think the reason that they did it so fast was to give Clayster the adequate amount of time to make a decision that he felt comfortable with. And so that paperwork and things like that, that are done behind the scenes could get over with and he could enjoy his off season and you can see on your screen right now clay tweeted don't want to blow up twitter but man this is heart-wrenching for me spent all night sobbing and chain smoking cigs felt super shitty to give it all to give it my all to accomplish something obtain that goal then get put back into the mix like it was all for nothing just want security man 
He then went on to tweet, I totally understand a number slash biz standpoint, but it really feels cold to me to win a world championship for a team and then have them force my team option so they can sell me for a buyout instead of letting me walk for free. I know Stro doesn't want that, but man, investors stink. For anybody saying anything about the timing, yes, it does suck to be so soon to such a huge victory, but I would so much rather it be this way where they told me ASAP so I could field options and figure out a new place that works. I'd so much rather have it this way. He then tweets, I think that no matter how I feel, it's gonna go 4v4 regardless. I've been t I've been the odd man out since the start. Zio plus the GOAT. So I realistically feel, don't feel too bad. Or shouldn't feel too bad, excuse me. I put myself in the best position to see continued success next year and hopefully get a banging team. I 100% didn't mean for any of my previous tweets to cast any shade or hate onto Stro. He's working his absolute hardest to get me on a team that I wanna go to and you guys get it. So what's really tough here is that he has these strong feelings but he can't really place them on anybody other than Call of Duty and switching to 4v4. What's really tough about this though is because 4v4 is the way that Call of Duty should be and it is what will drive more viewership. That A lot of people share that opinion and a lot of people believe in it and that's why we made that change. For Clayster though, he is one of the players in particular that this really screws over. So I think as a community, we can band behind him and hope that he bounces back once again and is able to lead that pack of wolves that he's always talking about.